Hi. I'd like to talk a bit about time savers that you can use on the milling machine to just make your job easier and therefore quicker. And uh, I already showed you this one in my video on countersinks and spot drills. Uh, it's a uh, quill nut that you can push this button in with your thumb and slide it up and down. <clears throat> That's not terribly smooth because I got an awkward angle, but there you go. And it's um, it's not that expensive. Uh, I think this one was about $35. You can do your fine adjustment there. You still have your graduations. Um, now the Bridgeport has a half inch 20 thread here. So this has got 20 threads, which means you've got 50 graduations going around on this. Uh, honestly, I, I never use the graduations. I just go until it's at a, a point that looks good and then I can run my quill down against it and I set my, uh, my depth with the knee. Um, the stock one, uh, this is actually the one that uh, came off of it. It's actually got a jam nut. You can see that it's um, threaded on the inside, so jam nut, graduated dial. And if you wanted to set this, you would actually have to spend about 12 hours uh, threading it all the way up. And uh, that got old really fast. Um, it's not exactly easy to put one of these on. You have to disassemble a ton of stuff. Uh, you basically have to undo bits of the power feed uh, uh, mechanism down here. There's a, a, a pin or a plunger or something up here. Uh, it's actually very easy to break so if you're putting one of these on you may find that it's, uh, it's bent or broken in there. Um, and then you have to drop all this out. There's also a retaining ring down at the bottom here by my thumb. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to take off just in order to get one of these on. Uh, but if you've got a couple hours there in the afternoon, um, it's, a, it's a really handy thing to do. We also have uh, this, which you saw in my, um, my countersinks and spot drills video. And it's just a spring-loaded one. Uh, it goes on the exact same way. Uh, got a half 20 thread in there. You don't have a whole lot of adjustment on it, but you can just clip it on anywhere. The next thing I want to tell you about is this quill handle. Um, now on the stock handle, you know, you if you want to reposition it, you have to pull it off, and sometimes that can be very difficult to do. Uh, it's a very thin base, and you'd have to pull it off and move it to one of the many uh, holes that runs around this quill. This one, it's got this spring-loaded lever like this, which retracts a pin and then you can just move it back to whichever position you want and that's great for when you're drilling holes and you run into a spot where you start losing leverage down around here so you can just reposition it and keep on drilling now um, it's held on with a set screw right here and um, it just goes into one of the grooves on the the shaft of the quill um, and then it's got its uh, spring handle. These things are actually pretty cheap too. These are only about $35 or $40. And uh, it goes on in maybe two minutes. Um, it's super worth it. I would highly recommend getting one of these. Uh, I got spoiled by all the ones we have on the machines at work. And um, uh, I had to get one for my own. So another thing that's really handy is a draw bar hammer. And this is one that I made myself. Um, I just took a three quarter inch deep well socket. I uh, plugged the center with a steel rod. I uh, had to turn it down and press it in. Uh, I think I've actually got some Loctite in. And then uh, that gave me something that I could actually drill and tap into since the wall of the socket's so thin. Uh, it wouldn't be thick enough that I could actually get more than a thread or maybe a thread and a half in. And then what I did is I made this uh, brass end so that I could smack the top of the draw bar to release my collet or end mill holder or whatever I was using. And uh, on that I just, I think it's some uh, one inch or 25.4 millimeter stock. Uh, that's not terribly important, but I, I did uh, mill a square on the end. Um, so that I could press it into the half inch uh, drive of the socket um, and I made that a little bit tight so uh, that way I wouldn't have to pin it. Uh, the socket's 
pretty hard so it wasn't exactly fun uh, drilling it and it wasn't uh, definitely wasn't fun tapping it <laughs> and then I just made an aluminum handle for it uh, um, probably can't see there's a fine knurl on there not enough that it's gonna rip up your hands but uh, uh, enough that you can get a good solid grip for when you need to um, smack the top of the drawbar and it's great because you're not reaching for multiple tools you can get up there loosen up the drawbar turn it around and give it a little smack here's another quick one that's uh, really affordable it's a speed handle for your vise and uh, they sell a couple of different brands of these uh, but they're they're mostly seem to be the same uh, this one's got two holes they've got a single hole version um, but it's really nice with the two holes because you can very quickly open and close your vise and then you put in the larger hole to actually do your clamping down um, I don't remember how much this was but uh, it wasn't too bad I'll see if I can find it and I'll put a link to it in the comments now we have the uh, vice stop which um, this one's homemade uh, they're really easy to make and I'll probably actually do a build video on one um, uh, they're not that hard at all um, but uh, the way this works is you clamp it on the vice jaw like that and you would tighten up your screw and at this point then you would put your par parallels in and you'd bump your part up against it and the reason this is a time saver is because the vast majority of your uh, quote unquote machining time is actually spent setting up um, so what this does is eliminate the need to find your x-axis location on every single part so obviously you're going to find your y uh, using the fixed jaw so you always know where that is and then you can just bump all these parts up against it and uh, you'll know where your X is within a thousandth uh, maybe two um, so it's a great time saver uh, especially if you've got multiple parts to make or multiple setups on a part say you were using a collet block or something like that now the big brother to the vice stop is the table stop and uh, this is also shop made I made it last year and I, I like this design. I'll do a build video on this one as well um, because uh, if you loosen up the knob you can pivot this thing around which most of them are just straight out especially the ones you can buy are just straight out and you can't really move this arm up or down and uh, this makes it really convenient being able to uh, put the arm lower uh, if you've got something stuck on the table. Now I've got two ends on this thing um, I've got one that's turned down to an eighth of an inch and you probably can't see it but the end is slightly crowned so it's got uh, as small a point of contact there as possible and then I also put this tapered end which the end is also somewhat rounded um, the uh, I never did clean off my layout fluid but um, uh, I got fancy with the handle and cut these flutes in it um, I just thought it gripped better but you could easily do that with knurling too um, uh, there's a slot cut in it so you can tighten it on the column and um, again I got kinda fancy um, the one that I based this off of at work um, also had a slot in it but you could easily just do one or two or three holes there um, and that's just so you can bolt it down in different positions uh, but you've got a lot of flexibility with this thing and it's uh, it's super fantastic so this next one is uh, is pretty handy if you change your jaws a lot, uh, either moving your jaws to the outside positions of the vise so you can hold larger work pieces, or if you wanted to switch to soft jaws for uh, one project or another. Um, so let me get these untightened here. There we go. Um, it can be hard to use just a standard Allen wrench. I mean, I've got the ball end on that, so this works okay, but you have to have the jaw open pretty um, pretty wide. So what I did was cut a 3 8 hex on the end of this. So that goes in there, and it's very easy to uh, get the screws out very quickly. Um, now I made this for one reason or another out of steel, and it was really heavy, so you can see I actually lightened the outside. I even drilled into the hex a ways uh, just to make sure that it, it felt good in the hand. Uh, but you could probably actually make this out of aluminum and press in a piece of 3 8 hex stock, like from a cut-off Allen wrench. Um, and 
just like my table stop I actually uh, got real fancy on this and cut the flutes in there but you could easily do this with knurling uh, you're not putting a ton of pressure on there so you're you're not going to tear up your hands with a knurl now here's another nice time saver and it's an adapter that I made for my half inch drill uh, to raise and lower the knee on my mill uh, I've since gotten a power feed but um, uh, which I'll show you in a minute but basically to make this I just copied all of the dimensions off of the standard knee handle and of course there are different mills out there so if yours has a different pattern uh, just uh, have to make it accordingly uh, but the bridge board has nine of these teeth and the way these are made is let me get it on camera here um, you do you have to use indexing either a dividing head or you could do this with one of the spin indexers too um, and the edge of the cutter is set on the center line of the part just like that so on your first cut you would make a pass and then you'd index over make a pass that way and you keep doing that and at the end of the ninth division um, by the time you pass across it actually forms the um, the geometry on the other side of this um, now again depending on the mill you've got um, you'll, you'll have to change the uh, dimensions but on a bridge port I think the inside is a 5 8 hole looks like it um, I'm not sure if this little counter bore here is super critical or not but it was on the knee handle uh, so I did that and I used a 3 16 end mill um, to do this. You could probably get by with an eighth, but I was concerned that I would end up with a little nub right there um, when the eighth inch end mill passed by. So I ended up with these kind of angular cuts right there. They don't affect anything. I would definitely, if you're going to use a cordless drill, do it on the low speed option so it's got more torque. And uh, I've since made one of these for um, the local community college as well. Um, and I actually took a lot of this weight off. I turned this down to about an inch or 25 millimeters uh, up to about there um, and it really shaved a lot of weight off of it. Now this one's a guilty pleasure for me. It's a power draw bar which lets you change tools much faster with just the push of a button. If you're doing a lot of tool changes and you've got a, um, a lot of parts to make with those tool changes it's a huge uh, back saver. We've got them on the mills at work, so I, uh, I got really spoiled by those and I hated coming into my shop and having to use the drawbar wrench. So I, uh, I had worked a lot of overtime one weekend and uh, I saved my pennies and, and bought one of these. Uh, they are pretty expensive um, and they make uh, different varieties. This is Maxi Torque Right. Uh, Kurt makes one, uh, the same people as the Vices. Um, there's a bunch of different, I think Servo from the, of Power Feed fame, they make one. And there's a lot of homebrew options out there too. So uh, if you're interested in, in getting one, you may want to look into those. They have people who sell kits or plans and uh, uh, they're not super complicated. A lot of them are based off of the uh, little butterfly impact wrenches that you can get for less than 20 bucks over at Harbor Freight or uh, most of the home improvement stores. So, also a pretty expensive option, but uh, one that's mighty handy are power feeds for your mill. Um, now the first time I ever saw one of these, um, I had no idea how to actually use it. And um, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, you click the handle one way or the other. Um, you can change your speeds with this potentiometer. Um, but the first time I ever used one, I sat there and I, I waited for the part to get up close um, after having moved the table way over so that I could change tools. And I didn't realize that this button back here is a rapid traverse. Um, so if you press that, it goes as fast as it can, which on this one is uh, about 30 inches a minute. Um, now I actually have one on the knee as well. Um, and uh, if you're going to get one power feed, I would actually recommend getting the knee one first. Uh, they're not hard to install. It uh, took me uh, uh, just a day to put one of these on. They are pretty expensive. I think they're around $800 or so. You can get the Chinese knockoffs, um, 
But I went ahead and saved my pennies for the servo, the name brand one, because I know that in 20 years I'm going to be able to get parts for this thing. Um, I'm, I really can't say the same about the Chinese ones. So here's my mill power feed. And again, if you're only going to get one power feed, it should be this one. I can live with cranking the handle for years to get the x-axis back and forth. Uh, but uh, moving the, the knee handle is such a pain, especially considering it usually comes out of those splines. Uh, so it just gets to be really tiresome moving that thing around and having it pop out on you. Uh, this is a little different than what you would probably be used to because you've got this circular handle uh, permanently installed. The knee handle never goes back on. It's not too bad though, you get used to it pretty quickly. You can still read your dial very easily and it still has all the same functions that the normal x-axis power feed has. You've got your up and down handles. You still have a potentiometer over there to change your feed rate although you really don't use this thing for cutting metal. Uh, and then uh, you also have a, a rapid traverse button back there. You probably can't see it because of the handle. Um, you can actually use this for boring holes, but you wouldn't want to plunge cut uh, or use it to drill or anything like that. Um, now you'll also notice that this is uh, at a bit of an angle, and that's not just because I'm an idiot. Uh, I did that so I could still use the quill lock on the knee or the knee lock, pardon me, um, which is located right behind this. And if you had this thing perfectly uh, straight up and down, you wouldn't be able to actually lock your knee anymore. Um, so I know it made me twitch for a little while, and I'm sure some of you guys are going into epileptic seizures because it's not straight, but uh, there's a reason for that. Um, anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you next time.